Oh, so it's uh, my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Radu Bach from the University of Vienna. Um, many of us know Radu for in the last, uh, I guess, since uh, COVID started, because uh, he's the one who introduces uh, the speakers for, for this uh, uh, seminar, the One World Optimization Seminar. And I think uh, we all appreciate uh, the great job that he did, especially how we all see him looking so attentively at all the talks, and uh, he always asks so much great, so many great questions. Uh, seems to be so knowledgeable about, about all the topics. So uh, Radu received uh, his PhD and habilitation at uh, Chemnitz University of Technology, the Faculty of Math, and uh, they, they led to two books. Uh, so he has a book in duality and vector optimization, and then he has another book in uh, conjugate duality and convex optimization. And another thing that we may all know about uh, Radu is uh, his work with uh, Sabah and Tabul on uh, the Palm algorithm and the this new powerful KL property uh, for convergence theory. And this led to the SAM activity group optimization prize. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, Radu, the floor is all yours, and um, hopefully people will stay around. We can have many questions after your talk. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Henry, for a nice introduction and for inviting me. Just a little correction. So the paper you mentioned was uh, written by Jerome Boyle. I mean, uh, it's uh, yeah, oh, not I'm far. Sorry. From... <laughs> I'm oh. also uh, yeah, working on a similar topic, and we will have uh, today my topic, that these techniques at rest. Okay. So say, yeah. thank you for inviting me. It's, it's a great, great pleasure to, to talk in the, the seminar. Um, yes, uh, so today I will uh, uh, address uh, a problem here yeah, which uh, comes from numerical linear algebra, but we like to use some optimization techniques yeah, for, yeah, for, for solving this problem. And this uh, talk is based on a joint work with my former PhD student, Dan Koan Nguyen, who is a postdoc in, my, in, in Vienna. So after introducing the problem and formulating the problem, I will present the documentation model and discuss the commodities analysis. And uh, I will uh, present a number of numerical experiments and we compare our algorithm with, with other algorithms addressing yeah, the same problem, namely the problem of uh, negative factorization of a completely positive matrix. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the square root of a uh, positive number, I mean, this would be the easy problem, but actually we want to do the same for the matrix. So a matrix A is called completely positive if it can be written as uh, the product of a matrix B with B transpose, where B is uh, a matrix having non-negative entries. And uh, yeah, the matrix A is an N times N matrix, the matrix B is an N times R matrix, and uh, R is something which uh, we will uh, just give in, in the algorithm, but one can say more about R and about, uh, let's say, um, uh, optimal and minimal R. And uh, I will also yeah, present some theoretical uh, statements on, yeah, on, on R, let's say. So we denote the, the cone of uh, matrices having this property by CPN. Yeah? And, uh, yeah, we will we'll characterize this set as well. So as I said, we like to, to uh, formulate this problem hmm, as a relation problem to present the first order algorithm and to introduce an algorithm to discuss the commodities properties of this method and to, to validate and, and test the theoretical findings you know, in, in various numerical experiments. So what is known is that the factorization yeah, of a matrix which is completely positive is never unique. Of course, one can, let's say, enlarge you know, the factor B by adding zero columns. And then one, one would get different uh, yeah, uh, factorizations. Yeah? This is an, an, a, a trivial remark. But then for, for a matrix, uh, like, like the matrix A, yeah? the matrix proposed and discussed by, by Dickinson, yeah? this is a three times three matrix. Yeah, one has uh, different factorizations. Uh, some of them of, of dimension where the factor has dimension three times three, but also where the factor has the dimension three times four. Mm -hmm. 
and this is obtained or the, the, without let's say adding zero columns to the three time, times three matrices. Uh, okay, so so this is this is a first a first example. Um, of course, the the matrix P four is obtained there by means of an iterative algorithm. Yeah? Uh, yeah, it's not easy to, to, to find such a, such coefficients you know, such that you know, as I said B4 times B4 transpose you know, uh, gives a matrix uh, with uh, uh, coefficients in natural numbers. So as I said the, uh, before I like to discuss a little bit that the that these uh, natural number R you know, which uh, yeah which uh, Okay, defines let's say the space where the factor belongs to, and uh, I will start. I like to, to introduce the notion of a CP rank of a matrix A, which is the the minimum minimal R with the property that exists that there is a such a B, huh? non-negative entries. B belongs to to R and and times R such that A can be written as B times B transpose. And this is the so-called CP rank. And uh, we also have the CP plus rank of the matrix A, which uh, is uh, yeah, defined in a similar way with a difference, but now B, that B uh, is as before a matrix with no negative entries, but yeah, with at least one column with positive entries. So this is this is not a notation yeah, for, for matrices having all entries positive numbers. Yeah? But non still non-negative numbers and, and one column um, with with positive entries, and this defines the so-called CP plus rank. And what do we have? This result, uh, which is uh, we got produced by Dickinson, 2010, the same same paper that one can characterize the interior of the the CPN cone uh, by means of such matrices uh, which have non-negative entries and which have at least one column with positive entries. And here I just want to yeah to to fix yeah, the, the topology yeah, we consider on the space of matrices. So this is the one introduced by the Frobenius inner product and Frobenius norm. Okay, so the interior of the of this cone will play a role in the in my experiments. Yeah? So since you we will see yeah, that that uh, yeah, it is uh, not so easy uh, to provide factorizations for matrices which are uh, the boundary of the code. So, and, and then we, yeah, we, will, we will choose this such matrices in our numerical experiments and to emphasize, yeah, as I said, the performances of our algorithm. So, can you calculate this, this CP rank or the CP plus rank? Uh, I mean, there is no, there is no known uh, exact formula for. Uh, yeah, for the two, but what we have here, we have some upper bounds. And this is the result yeah, uh, obtained by Holmes and Dickinson and Steele in 2015. So expressed in terms of the, the dimension of the matrix A. Okay, but so these are some logical results and it, it, was, it was just important to, to discuss and to present them here uh, just to fix the setting. Huh? Let me come now yeah, to the to the problem you like to solve. So namely you like to factorize yeah, a matrix in CPN. And uh, I want to, to present first three approaches yeah, introduced yeah, last year to 2020. And uh, so using already some optimization thinking. Uh, and I would like to start with a reformulation of this problem as a feasibility problem proposed by Gressler and Dürer. In 2020, as I said. Okay, just to, to present the approach. So the, the approach is as follows. One looks first for a factorization of A, okay? namely A uh, should be written as B as B transpose. How to do this? So I there are different ways to do this. Uh, yeah, I will I will mention uh, two of these methods later on. And then having such a matrix B. So for B is not required that B had no negative ends at this point. But then having such a matrix B, one is looking for a matrix Q, which belongs to the intersection of these two sets, P, B, and O, R. And let me start with O, R. O, R is the set of R times R orthogonal matrices. 
This is a non-convex set. So one is one, one is looking for a matrix Q in this set. And also in the set PB, which is uh, the so-called polyhedral cone associated to, to, the, to the matrix P. So this is the, the, the set of those matrices, R times R, such that BX um, is a matrix with no negative entries. Okay, and having such a matrix, such a matrix, uh, a matrix in, in this intersection, yeah, one you can write A as BQ times BQ transposed. Yeah? And then and BQ being a matrix with non-negative entries, yeah, one yeah, gets in this way uh, non-negative factorization for A. Okay, so this is a very clever formulation of the problem. And of course, it's suggesting that one can use for solving this problem a so called okay, an alternative projection algorithm. And this is, this is formulated by Gröstner and Dürer in the same paper. Yeah? So it's just about projecting yeah, on the cone and then on, on the set of orthogonal matrices. Yeah? And uh, yeah, this algorithm yeah, provides uh, factorization for the, for the matrix A and uh, Okay, so now what about the two projections? So the, the first, the set PB is polyhedral. Yeah? So we have here the, the projection, which is, uh, which is singleton. And uh, but still it is very, very difficult to calculate this first projection on PB. Yeah? So, okay, one, one can do this by using a second order conical problem and by reformulating the problem in this way and by using the algorithms that develop for such problems. So this, this projection required for inner loops. Okay, the second projection, it's the projection on a set which is non-convex. This is why we have here, uh, yeah, uh, an, let's say an, a non-singleton or non-unique non projection. And, uh, and it's, it's also uh, difficult yeah, to, to calculate. And I, I will uh, just uh, present a, a possible approach uh, uh, to project on uh, this uh, set of the matrices uh, okay, I mean, of course, the classical approach uh, relies on singular variable decomposition. So, I mean, in order to get rid of, of the first projection, or, or let's say to simplify it, the same authors proposed in the same paper, propose the same paper, another approach uh, which asks for the projection on, on the non negative orton, which is something which is very, very easy. And uh, for uh, yeah, for a new sequence, yeah, p hat k, and then for the projection of p hat k on, on this uh, orthogonal set. B plus is the, is the more uh, parallel inverse of B. Yeah. So, and this modified uh, map algorithm is, has, okay, produces a sequence qk plus one, yeah, which, which then provides a factorization, but yeah, is uh, a voice calculation of the projection on this uh, this polyhedral set, and uh, yeah, is is producing uh, generating uh, better results than uh, let's say the the plain map algorithm yeah, or or the the standard one. In the same context, I want to to present a third approach yeah, introduced by. Uh, Tim K, who is also in the room, and his his uh, co-authors, they're relying on on a, on a DC approach. Yeah, I will not not present the the, the problem behind, yeah? but uh, yeah, the the approach proposed in this paper is uh, again projecting on non-negative orton, which is easy. Is projecting on the orthogonal set, and uh, yeah, what we have here is also uh, uh, yeah, a fixed step size. Yeah? LB consider this is this is uh, yeah first of all uh, uh, an evaluation yeah, of of this this term, but then there is a second version yeah, which is uh, using uh, adaptive strategy yeah, without a fixed uh, step size and uh, which is even more competitive yeah, than let's say th this one yeah, where LB is fixed. Okay, but I'm presenting here only let's say the the less competitive algorithm proposed by Tinke and uh, yeah, his authors, his co-authors. Okay, so these are standard methods. I, I call them standard, I mean, not so old, yeah, but this is something yeah, we, we found in the literature yeah, for solving yeah, the, pro the factorization problem. And all these methods rely on uh, 
the use of iterative schemes. So, and we want to, to propose something in the same spirit, but then formulating yeah, the, our, our generation model in a, in a different way. Okay, so before coming to, to our scheme, I'd like just to mention that uh, when, for, for starting all three, all these three algorithms, one needs the composition of the matrix A is B times B transposed, and this can be either done by choice the composition or by spectral decomposition. Uh, this is something, something standard in numerical linear algebra, but for the projection yeah, onto the set OR, on the orthogonal set, yeah, one that can use, and, and this, is, this is something which is used in all, all these three papers, or two papers in, in all these three algorithms, uh, one can use this SVD decomposition, and then, yeah, yeah U times V transpose yeah, provides an element yeah, in this projection. Okay, but of course, these are inner loops here, which, which uh, can be costly. We will see uh, in the numerical experiments that uh, they take some time. So let me come now to our model. So our model is, uh, yeah, uh, more simple, I would say. So we are just solving a constraint optimization problem. Our objective function is a smooth function. And uh, we minimize this function over the intersection of the, of the non negative orthant yeah, with, uh, with a closed convex uh, set. And this is the, this ball expressed in terms of the Frobenius norm and the uh, uh, radius square root trace of A. And uh, of course, this is a non-convex problem yeah, because of the, the non-convexity of the objective function. And uh, the critical points yeah, of the problem P are just expressed in terms of the gradient of, the, of this objective function and the normal cone of the convex closed set um, D. And uh, it is important to mention here that, I mean, what, what we introduce here is this, this assumption that X is, uh, belongs to this convex closed ball, yeah? but uh, this assumption does not restrict the generality of the problem yeah? since when a matrix A yeah, is having this, this uh, uh, formulation or it can be written as x times x transpose, yeah, then yeah, the norm, the familiar norm of x must be less or equal than the square root of trace of a. So this is a just a, a, a natural uh, yeah, condition which appears here yeah, when a is having this uh, this formula. And uh, what what we know and what we have is that x star is the solution of the problem p and uh, yeah, the objective function takes the x star the value zero. This is if and only if yeah, x star provides uh, non-negative factorization for the matrix A. I mean, of course, we are talking here about global minima. We will not be able to, to find global minima. We will not be able to find local minima. We will, we will be able to find critical points. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, these are motivating statements for, for our model. But and you will see in the experiment, everything works well. In the theory, uh, we will be able yeah, not to, to, let's say, completely solve the problem, but to, to detect critical points. OK, so let me come up to the algorithm. The algorithm is, is actually a very natural, very classical algorithm. So what we are doing here, we are just combining uh, uh, relaxation and inertia techniques uh, uh, with, the, with the classical projective gradient algorithm. Of course, that is the more natural thing one can do okay, since we have to, to minimize the smooth function over subject to, to a convex set. So we are just, yeah, first of all, yeah, we are considering the, uh, inertial construction yeah, or, or, or momentum, momentum parameters or momentum construction. We are making here, uh, a gradient step and then and then and then we project on D. D is a convex set and we use the relaxation parameters. Okay. And, and now let me come to to some some aspects which make yeah, our problem yeah, not so easy to handle. So of course our function is differentiable, yeah, but what we don't have is that this gradient is Lipschitz continuous. So this, this we cannot guarantee, of course. I mean, just think of the function x to the power four. This would be, let's say, uh, our objective function uh, in dimension one. Yeah. Differentiable, yeah. 
uh, even C1, but uh, credit is not always continuous. And, and this, this makes uh, things more complicated, in particular, uh, when it comes to the analysis of the algorithm. So then, okay, another aspect I'd like to comment on is the fact that what we, we, what we have here, we combine inertial and relaxation parameters. And in particular, I mean, just to say some words about inertia parameters. Inertia parameters were introduced by Poliak in the non convex case yeah, with the aim to, yeah, to make the algorithm yeah, detect different critical points or different local minima yeah, just by playing around with alpha k. Right? In the convex case, this was noticed by Alvarez and Atush, yeah, in order to get convergence of this, this type of inertia algorithms, yeah, it was important yeah, to assume that the sequence alpha k is less than one third. So one third was, uh, let's say, an historical upper bound for alpha k. But then it was noticed yeah, by Atush and Pei and later on also in, in, in other papers, that when introducing both inertial and relaxation parameters, yeah, one can uh, start playing with the two parameters yeah, in, in order to allow alpha k yeah, to take values yeah, which are greater than one over three. Yeah. Since, since letting alpha k uh, uh, convert to, to one, yeah. okay, uh, yeah, provide, provide a better properties, a better convergence yeah, to, to the algorithm that you will see. This is this our, our aim yeah, to, to, to make or to, to allow alpha k to take the sequence alpha k uh, to take values yeah, which are, uh, yeah, of course, larger than one third and close to one. Okay, so this important important aspect, and and, and then the, the second important aspect here is that since we don't have for for the gain of, of our objective function Lipschitz constant, it's not Lipschitz continuous, yeah, then yeah, we will uh, yeah have to to use in our in our scheme a different. I mean, yeah, uh, for the. Yeah, for, for the step size, a yeah, value which is a, an upper bound yeah, for we see for Lipschitz constant or for a sequence of Lipschitz constant. Hmm, or, uh, okay, let me call this Lipschitz like constant. Yeah, and this upper bound yeah, is given by, by this number LF alpha plus, which will depend the supreme of the sequence alpha k on and on the trace and on the minimal eigenvalue of the matrix a so so this is yeah this this will be let's say the will give us the, the, the step size and then yeah we are as we ask here that the assumed rho that fulfills this inequality which i called relax inertia rho is between zero and one and why do you need all these assumptions of course in order to be able uh, to prove uh, convergence properties for the sequences that we generate with this algorithm. So again, so the algorithm is a, let's say a standard construction. It is a pro project integrated algorithm, uh, but we enhance the algorithm with inertia and with relaxation parameters and, and steps. And then yeah, in order yeah, to, to allow a certain interplay yeah, between these parameters and uh, yeah, we have to impose also some assumptions on, on, on these parameters, uh, which will allow us to, to prove the convergence of, uh, of the algorithm. So, and let me, let me then address some important aspects yeah, for the analysis, for the convergence analysis. First of all, and this is an important question, what about the projection on, on, on the set D? Can one calculate the projection? And in this case, I mean, the set D was an intersection of, of a non-negative orton with a closed uh, point. Yeah. In this case, yeah, by, by using a formula introduced yeah, by, by in this paper of Bausch, Kebu, and Wang, so we, ha we, can, we have an exact formula for the projection on D, yeah, which is also very, very useful when implementing the algorithm. So what about uh, some estimates which we use in our analysis? And uh, so what we have here is a so-called descent inequality of descent lemma, yeah, which if you look on, on, on the right hand side of this formula, yeah, would have instead of LXI, would have just the richest constant of the gradient, the classical one. But we have something here which kind of simulates yeah, this, uh, this lemma, this inequality. Okay, or if you want, 
So this inequality is, is obtained just by using the, the Taylor expansion of, uh, of our objective function. Now please notice that the coefficient, that okay, the, the number LXY depends on Y and X and also on the matrix A. And uh, yeah, but still, yeah, we, we, we use this inequality we, we got here in our analysis. And uh, it is also important to, to point out the following fact that the sequence we generate x k plus one is a sequence in D, so it, it is bounded, you know, which we'll use later in our in our analysis. The same applies for the sequence yk. Okay? And the sequence of these numbers we have here in the inequality at zk plus one yk is bounded by Lf alpha plus. And uh, okay, so so this this is an important aspect, and uh, here we yeah we we just use uh, the construction of we have in, in the algorithm of, of all these sequences to prove this inequality. And, and now you also understand uh, why uh, the co the constant LF alpha plus uh, plays a role in the algorithm in the definition of the step size, uh, since it is an upper bound uh, for. Yeah, what yeah, LXY uh, usually is, namely uh, uh, Lipschitz constant for the gradient of the gradient of, of our objective function. Okay, what about uh, the course analysis? So it, it is more or less standard. So what we can prove is a decreasing property. Okay? Please just look at this formula. And uh, it, it, it is something yeah, one wants to have when, when analyzing algorithms in order to, yeah, to be able to to apply to use the telescopic arguments. And the hypothesis here we, or, or the conditions we imposed on rho are, okay, guarantee that this term here, we have here that this fraction is positive. And then we have tau half on the left and on the right hand side of this inequality. And uh, yeah, just by applying the set telescopic arguments, the one can get the first uh, important statement for the conventional analysis of the algorithm. So, but be before coming to these statements, I would like to reformulate this inequality in terms of a of so-called energy function, which I define in this way. And this energy function yeah, uh, will play a role later on when, when uh, yeah, proving the convergence of the whole sequence we generate. So I will come to, to this uh, in, in the next section. And by introducing this function, the energy function, we can reformulate the previous inequality, inequality in this way. And, and as I said, the, the, the assumptions we imposed on the row and the, yeah, the way we constructed gamma guarantee that this coefficient is positive. And what we can do is just telescoping. So, so and uh, yeah, we get, uh, some first important results, but before coming coming to okay to these results, I'd like just to say some words about this energy function, namely, so the co the coefficient of the Frobenius norm is can be zero, yeah? and in this case, yeah? and I'd like us to relate the critical point of the co of of this uh, uh, function yeah? to the critical the critical points of our objective function. And uh, we have to be careful here since when tau is zero and tau is zero, so tau can be zero, namely when the rho is equal to one, alpha plus is zero. In this case, the energy function is nothing else than the objective function. And this is the calculation of, of its critical points yeah, where X star can be yeah, choose arbitrary. And when tau is positive, yeah, then the critical points of the objective function you know, can be characterized, okay, in, in this way in terms of critical points of, uh, of the energy function. But let me come to, to the first case, back to the first case when tau is zero. So when tau is zero, then what we get here for rho one and alpha zero, we get nothing else the, prox the projected gradient algorithm. Okay? Since alpha plus zero means all inertia parameters are equal to zero, Row one means there is no relaxation parameter. So we are in the particular case of, a, of the PG algorithm. Yeah? And for tau positive, yeah, we have a relaxed inertial PG algorithm. So, and uh, to talk about critical points. So I just want to, to mention that they are, yeah, they are, they are considered in the sense of uh, uh, zeros of the, of the differential. 
and the limit differential is, is well known. So here, here we have some properties of, of this object, but the more, most important thing I like to mention here is that you know, we use this differential in order to, to define a critical point of, uh, of a non-smooth function. And of course, local minimizers are critical points. And uh, yeah, the consequence of the decreasing property I presented before is that first of all, this sequence of function values is decreasing and, and converging. And then uh, it holds, okay, so we, it holds, okay, after by telescoping, what we get is that, that uh, yeah, that this sum is, is finite and this just uh, gives convergence, convergence of the of the sequence of, yeah, discrete velocities if you want. And uh, from here we get a similar statement for all these other sequences. And this just shows that the three sequences generated in our algorithm have the same cluster points. And this is, this is a, just the standard analysis of uh, non-convex algorithms. And the, what we also know and what we also get and, and can easily prove is that the set of cluster points yeah, of the sequence ZKX K minus one yeah, just provide a critical point yeah, or let's say a pair of critical points yeah, for uh, for our energy function. So this is a set of critical points, and uh, yeah, the set omega is non-empty, connected, and compact. And yeah, the sequence yeah, takes on omega uh, the limit of the sequence that the same the same value. Okay, psi star. Okay, so but this is these are standard statements in the analysis of of non-convex algorithms. And uh, then what you get from here is that every cluster point of XK is a critical point of our objective function. And of course, the next step, yeah, and this is why, why I said that uh, uh, yeah, we are, of course, we are in the, in the framework of a non-convex non-smooth algorithm, but the, we will use the critical service property here since our problem is a semi algebraic problem. Yeah, and I will not, yeah, uh, Go too much into detail here. Just just want to mention that this is the critical Lasevitz inequality, uh, yeah, which is here formulated for a general function k, which is proper or continuous, and uh, uh, for uh, at the at an element in the domain of the differential of the function, yeah? and uh, so we call k being a Kyle function. Yeah, if this inequality is fulfilled, here we have a function. Uh, phi, which which is which plays an important role. This is the so-called discretization function. The property is satisfied at every non-local critical point. This this can be easily seen. And uh, in the in the smooth case, when k is c one, uh, the the previous inequality inequality can be written in this form. And this is something one can uh, yeah let's say better understand. Yeah, also uh, from geometrical point of view, so what we do here we just translate yeah, the graph of the function k. Yeah, uh, with kx, we, we compose it with a function phi, and what we get here is a sharp function. Yeah? So the function with, with gradient, okay, in the neighborhood of, of, of uh, x, uh, which is uh, in the norm greater than one. And the inspiration for this construction was the, the Leasevitz uh, result, you know, uh, which uh, is just a particular case of what we have here, where the function phi has this form. And uh, what you get here is the reformulation. And I said this proved this result for an analytic function. So th this was, I mean, of course, what, what I presented here is if you want the reverse development, reverse history, actually everything started with Lasevitz. But uh, yeah, so I presented first the more general the definition and, and then and and uh, yeah, and then then and then I I presented the service result in a particular case of it. And then of course there was a lot of literature addressing this property and developing this property here. You can see some, some of the important works uh, on this topic. And uh, yeah, this picture is just to give you an idea, okay, that, uh, about uh, yeah, let's say the, the, the sharpness of the function uh, we get uh, after translating it with Kx and we have here different examples and, and different classes of functions fulfilling uh, this uh, property. But I would like to, to focus on semi-algebraic functions and, and uh, why, since this is exactly what we have. So we have in our problem formulation, yeah, we are in the semi-algebraic uh, case, we have matrices, yeah, we have uh, uh, an energy function uh, which uh, had these uh, properties 
And this just means that the seconds we, we generate in our algorithm is actually converging to a critical point of the objective function. It's, it's not only that every uh, limit point is a critical point, but the whole sequence is converging. And, and what we got to have here, it's just a setting where we can apply this critical service property. And uh, yeah, the technique of the proof is standard. One just proves yeah, that this uh, statement yeah, uh, okay, implies yeah, that uh, the sum yeah, of difference of Frobenius norms is finite. Yeah? So here we have the same statement, but the power two. Yeah? And from here we get a sequence is, is Cauchy sequence and it, it is convergent and that's all. I mean, this, this is again a standard technique. I don't want yeah, to, to say more about this. Okay. And what is also important to know, this is a theoretical result, which we cannot prove, but I will come back to this statement, is that in case, yeah, uh, I mean, we have a semi-algebraic semi -algebraic setting. Yeah? In a semi-algebraic smooth setting, we have the Delacere's properties is fulfilled, namely the property where the function phi yeah, uh, has that, that, uh, that formulation as in the Delacere's result. And then in such a case, depending on the exponent theta, one can one either has convergence in infinitely many steps or linear convergence or sublinear convergence. But this is something which we we don't know if it if it holds for our setting. This is something we just can see when looking at our numerical in the numerical experiment, the, the, the plots we provide in our numerical experiment. And and, and I will yeah. And, and this, this also leads to the, let's say the first open question, yeah, since we cannot say, uh, and it would be interesting to, to, to know if uh, the, the, yeah, if uh, yeah, for, our, for our object or for energy function, yeah, we have, let's say, yeah, the last service property fulfilled with exponent, exponent, exponent theta less than one half. Yeah? And uh, yeah, this would, would bring us in a, in a linear convergence setting. So, before coming to the exp experiment, let me discuss, shortly discuss some particular cases of our algorithm. Yeah? And start with the, with the case when alpha k is zero. This means we don't have inertial parameters. Yeah? We have just, just uh, project gradient step and the relaxation, relaxation parameters. And when, okay, when alpha k is zero, this means the supremum is zero, alpha plus, then our uh, condition linking relaxation and inertial parameters Okay, becomes this inequality and shows that, that we one can take rho equal to one, and and, and for rho one, uh, this is this choice allowed. One obtains the classical projective gradient algorithm, uh, PG. Okay, so this this is let's say one easy setting we cover with our general set. So what about the, the other case? The other simple case, the case when when rho is one, yeah, but alpha k is an arbitrary sequence in the interval zero one. So in this case, yeah, in order to, yeah, to fulfill our, the setting in which we can prove convergence, this is, this is important to, 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 yeah, to, to notice, one has to assume that alpha plus is greater than zero and less than this value. But what, what one can see is, is that here is that alpha plus is less than one. Yeah, so this value is less than one. So for, for rho equal one, we are not allowed to take alpha equal one. Okay? As I said, the larger alpha plus or a larger alpha case is, is something we would like to, to get, to achieve. Yeah? Now, the question is, yeah, in, in the case rho equal one, the question is how to, how to find an alpha plus to fill this inequality. Yeah? And what, what can we show is the following, that this inequality is fulfilled for sure for every alpha plus between zero and 0 0.967. Yeah? But uh, yeah. Of course, we would like yeah, to, to come closer to one yeah, and this we can do, but this of course depends on the matrix A. Yeah? So we, there is no guarantee that we can do this for every matrix, but in our, in our experiments here, yeah, we do this just by applying a bisection procedure, yeah? aim to find larger alpha plus, which uh, fulfill this inequality. Yeah? In a case, rho equal one. Okay, why? So, one of our aims is to apply, yeah, I mean, or to use some inertia sequences, which uh, yeah, uh, prove to be of big help, let's say in the convex optimization, yeah, like the, the nested of construction 
or uh, a modification of the nested off sequence, you know, which in the convex case, yeah, uh, yeah provide, uh, yeah, as you know, very good point rates, but for, for function values, and but also of the of the iterates. But yeah, what we cannot do here, we we cannot take yeah the classical constructions, but we have to multiply yeah, this uh, yeah these fractions by kappa, and to, to ask kappa to belong to interval zero one. Why? Yeah, since yeah the the condition we impose on alpha plus must be fulfilled also in this case, and this leads to this inequality, and we we see that kappa cannot be equal to one. Yeah, so we so we we are not allowed to to take here in. To, to take kappa one that just in order to be in the classical setting yeah, of Nesterov or modified Nesterov we have in the literature. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And in order, to, and, and then we yeah, have to be able to prove convergence. Yeah, this, this is what, what, what we have to, to keep in mind. So the conditions we impose, okay, yeah, are, are such that we can prove convergence of, the, of our algorithm. Okay, so the, the last, particular case I'd like to, to discuss is the following one. Let us assume now that our condition inertia yeah, we got for row one, so this condition is not fulfilled. Yeah, let us, why? I mean, we would like to take alpha plus close to one. Yeah? And even if, if, if the price which you have to pay is that to, it will be to, yeah, to, to take uh, row less than one. So let us assume that we can take alpha or we choose alpha plus greater than, than this square root. And this, namely, the that alpha plus fulfills, fulfills this inequality. Then we can still choose rho, but less than one. But then we have also have this, this choice for rho yeah, where we have to calculate these, these uh, ugly expressions, yeah? but we are allowed to do this. Yeah? And for instance, when alpha plus is one, one obtains this algorithm, rho is not anymore one. So the situation alpha plus one, rho one, we cannot have. So this is, this is not a situation in which we can prove convergence. So we have to, to, to find here a, a, a good trade-off between these two situations. So to, but what is important to notice here is that, and this we, we, I, I will show later, is that when by choosing alpha plus close to one, even if, the, if this cost, this choice of rho, okay, so this, this constellation yields the best performance of, of the algorithm, yeah. So, okay, and uh, so I, I get I have three more minutes. So let me yeah try to cover the next uh, eighteen uh, slides. No, but ju just to 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 discuss yeah so I just want to discuss some numerical experiments, and uh, yeah I, I present the setting. I just want to yeah to to, to do this uh, fast. Uh, okay. So, so here we have different algorithms yeah, which uh, or different variants of our algorithm, yeah, which we consider yeah, by, by playing with the relaxation parameter, by playing with, with alpha k, and we want to compare our algorithm with the modified MAP method and with the algorithm of uh, yeah, relying on, on the, the DC model. And we start, okay, and, and we start with the following, uh, yeah, with, with the following experiment. So we construct a matrix A yeah, by starting with the matrix P0 and we take here, okay, the absolute, absolute value means uh, we, we take absolute values of the component of P0 and uh, fix R. So we consider two values for R depending on N and notice that the diagonal line on, on DC outperforms all the other methods with respect to the number of iterations. Yeah. Also to the fact that it uses a line search routine and uh, yeah, the, our method has, has a very conservative step size rule, but yeah, we, our algorithm can compete with the, with the DC method in terms of time. Why this is, this is clear since the DC method is projected on, on the orthogonal set every time. And this takes a lot of, of time, of course. And just to show you here first, the first table, and what, what can you see here? You can see here, this is the time of, a, of successful uh, try, Let's, let's say, and uh, yeah, we are not far yeah, from, from, from this time uh, for dimension 40 and R61. And uh, here we can see that with, with the growing dimension, uh, yeah, uh, yeah we, we are, I mean, we, we very, very much improve 
the time uh, yeah when when comparing the the time we need yeah with the with the time uh, needed by the DC method, not number of iterations yeah but as I said yeah uh, of course information is, is clear and let me just go back to to this what we see here this was just to emphasize linear convergence yeah? and we will see these pictures also in, in, in the other experiments where we where we have uh, uh, linear convergence, but this is something which cannot we, we cannot prove, but we, we can just see. So uh, here is another experiment, and this is related to the role play, played by R. I just like to to present, yeah, experiment number three. This is a very funny situation, and and, and also uh, so I need two more minutes. So here we are looking for the following. Okay, we are looking at the following matrix A, yeah, which is written as a complex combination of the matrix, okay, the matrix A omega. Matrix A, matrix B. We have two matrices and we have a convex combination. And here is, okay, one can notice is that this matrix uh, A belongs uh, to the to the CP5 cone, but it's not in the interior of the cone. Okay? For omega less than one, we get a matrix which is in the interior. And it is, it's, it is much easier to factorize uh, the matrix A omega for omega less than one than to, to factorize the matrix A. And this is a good the, the explanation. Yeah, since for omega less than one, we get the, we get the matrix in the interior of the cone. And what what can notice here is that that uh, the last version of our algorithm, yeah, the one where we where we let alpha plus yeah, uh, yeah or we take it close to one, and then we adapt uh, the relaxation parameter. So the, this oh this was not good. So so the, the, these variants are are the best when when handling this this matrix and uh, all the other algorithms okay fail to do this yeah? so even for 0 0.99 which is still in the interior of the cone yeah? so our our algorithms okay are yeah provide uh, let's say better results yeah, than, than the other algorithms and and yeah for for a1 yeah, which is a okay the other algorithms yeah uh, we are presenting uh, yeah fail to to provide the factorization but uh, our algorithms are, are able to do to do so, and uh, the 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 last example I've discussed just, just to, to show you something which is which is very interesting, and this is this is this is the the, the last thing I will uh, uh, say is that considering a family of matrices A to N yeah, with the same property, not in the interior but but in the cone, yeah? so we have a situation where we use this, some. Uh, identity matrices and uh, some all ones matrices to construct them. One have a situation where the, the best algorithm yeah, for factorizing this matrix is the, the so-called inertial nestor of algorithm. And this is the algorithm for which we cannot prove convergence. This would be the algorithm yeah, using the nestor of inertia terms, but for kappa one. So, so we just implemented the algorithm and we notice that this is the best of. And this is a method for which we can approve convergence. So we, we, we can bring this the setting, the setting in our general scheme, in our general, general rule, but uh, this algorithm is, is a kind of uh, outperforming all the other methods. Yeah? So we have a method for, for which there is no theory from our point of view, or it, it's, we don't have a theory, in the framework of our analysis, but which yeah, is, as I said, is, is the best one for factorizing yeah, uh, these, these methods. Okay, and this just yeah shows that we have to invest more in in uh, yeah for instance proving coverages also for this setting or yeah another thing to do here is to to yeah, try to prove yeah that uh, yeah we we can we we have a linear convergence yeah, from theoretical point of view yeah and then uh, yeah one could also look at some reformulation of the problem yeah, in, in in a different way. So uh, yeah, so there are there are here some questions that one can address uh, in future. So these are some references. So my talk was based on the paper with Kwan Nguyen, uh, and uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Cool. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. And um, well, I'll open up for questions. Uh, uh, may I ask a question here? Please, how? Yes. 
So um, in the experiments, I, I find that uh, you are choosing the parameter R relatively big compared with N. So I think N is like 40. You choose R is 40 uh, as well in one of your experiments. Okay. So, so I was wondering, usually, uh, so there are some a parameter called extension complexity where the smallest the R is uh, becomes more interesting. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if you have tried, so for example, here, you choose R greater than or equal to 40. So there are some problems where a smaller R is more exciting. And in fact, I think for, uh, there is even an alpha bond on the R um, in that case. So have you tried anything, any problem instance where R is much smaller than N? Uh, I mean, of course, so we, 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 try, we try different situations and uh, we are, of course, we, we are also able to, to, yeah, to provide factorizations, uh, but I mean, our R is still below the upper bound. Yeah? I mean, the, the, we, we consider here. So, so uh, I mean, for, for, this, for this result I presented here, okay, these are, these are the values we considered just also to, yeah, to, to make comparisons to other algorithms. But of course it is, it is interesting question yeah, to, to try to find uh, values of R which are yeah, close to the CP rank. But uh, if I'm not wrong, so these kind of, of experiments were considered also in the paper by uh, Grössner and Dürer. And, and this is why, why we, we opted for these values for R. And just to, right. be, to, to be in the same setting. I see. But right. you are right. I mean, in order to, I mean, of course, it is, it, it is, a, it is an aim yeah, to, to find yeah, Rs which are close to the, to the yeah, infimum yeah, or to, to, the, to the CP rank. Uh, yeah. So this is, I said from the very beginning. So in our approach, we are fixing R and, and trying to find the factorization. But it, 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 it is, of course, an interesting question how to, yeah, to, to look for, for values yeah, for R which are, uh, yeah, as low as possible. Right, thank you. And, and when you choose R low, does that mean that you're making the problem close to the boundary of the no, no. So, cone? No, so, so, so we cannot always find a factorization for, for, I mean, so here we do the following. So we construct the matrix A, okay, here R would be 2N. For sure, since we, we start with the B zero, yeah? and one R would be to N, but it's not cl it's not clear if they're okay. How how far can we go? Yeah, and, and lowering R, one point five N yeah, is still doable, yeah? but uh, it's not clear here if uh, we can find values for R which are less than this. I mean, this is this is not, not not always clear. I mean, yeah. But sometimes, sometimes it's. I mean, of course, yeah. Let's say if if you start with such, for for instance here, yeah. So we have n is five hundred. Then we we get. I mean, the one r which works, yeah, because yeah, this is the way we constructed a would be one thousand. Yeah? I mean, uh, it, it's not clear. Yeah, we cannot always find r's which are mass much less than one thousand. And this choice was the one from the paper of Gresner Dürer, just to be able to, I mean, just to, to think in, in their setting and to, to compare our algorithm with their methods. Um, what about what about sparsity? If you start trying to introduce sparsity, okay, this is a good point. Yeah. So this this is a good a good point. So one can yeah one one can formulate a problem in in in, a, in, in this way. I mean, just the, by inducing an extra regularizers, but then one would get two non smooth functions in the objective. Yeah? One coming from the indicator function, and then uh, let's say a one norm or something like that. This would, I mean, this would make the algorithm, I mean, of course, probably wouldn't be able to solve the problem with, with this method, but yeah, there are other methods probably yeah, which could solve that problem. This is, this is a, good, a, a, good, a good, good point. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Can I ask a question, Radu? Um, did you do comparisons to the, uh, if I understand right, the, the algorithm that uh, Miriam Durant, uh, tried was just basically 
alternating projections? Yes. Um, and was it was it just that that alternating projections took a long time to find a local a region of, of, of okay, local let, convergence yeah. or, uh, compared okay. to yours, for instance? Okay. So, so let, okay. Let, let me tell. You. I mean, let, let, let us take this this experiment where we had this type of, of matrices. Okay. Uh, and then so we have here identity matrices and all one vectors and so on. So for instance, for this experiment, but also for for, or, or, or let's let's take this 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 a omega experiment. Which this is a superstar here in, in in the world of of examples. Here, what what we did so we use actually the the improved method of, of Miriam Dior. So the one uh, which is not calculated projection on this polyhedral cone, okay, but the the one which is just calculated uh, Perot's inverse of, of B. And what we notice here, okay, so this method was not able to to solve the problem. So, so, so we, because of the dimension, yeah, we, we did here 10,000 iterations yeah, and without yeah, achieving the stopping criterion for, for, for the method of, of Miriam Dior. For the method of TNK, yeah, so this was successful yeah, after 9,000 iterations. And for, for Nesterov, so Nesterov was the best here. Yeah. But what, have, what you can see here for this matrix, yeah, the, the Deus algorithm was not able to provide a factorization. Huh? Why? Since the, you know, the matrix is very close to the boundary. Huh? And all the, all our, okay, our versions, okay, they were all able to, to provide a factorization. This is the time yeah, we need. Yeah. I'm just wondering, I mean, so often I see these, these pattern where alternating projections are the, you know, something similar. Yeah, it, it might take a really, really long time before it finds a, a region of, of you know, nice mm -hmm. local properties. And then once it finds that local area, it, okay. it converges at the same rate that you might predict by some of the other methods. It's just that yours mm -hmm. is a globalization technique that allows you to search uh, more efficiently somehow. And I'm just wondering- Yes, like, if you start yes, yes, yes. You... Okay, yeah, yeah, this is a good point. This is a good point, it's a good point. I mean, I mean, from the point of view of the theory, so the map algorithm, Okay, for that algorithm, one can prove local convergence. I mean, but you have to start to start very close to the solution actually, yeah? and then uh, this is this is sometimes difficult yeah, to 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 say sure. where to start. Sure, yeah? sure, sure. Yeah. But then ten thousand iterates was a lot. I it was a lot. I mean, we said okay, then let us yeah come to an end at some point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. But but you're right. I mean, yeah. Let's say guess the solution. The starting of the solution. Yeah would work also for, 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 for the map algorithm. Yes, you're right. Yep. Yeah. But this is something we, we don't need actually yes? yeah. here in our, in our version. Yeah. Then if I can follow up on that, then, then your, your, your rates of convergence, um, is that a global linear rate or is that just local? No, it is a global rate. Yeah, that's, that's, yes. that's impressive. But we cannot, we, we, we cannot, we cannot prove it. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a theoretical result. Yeah? We can just notice it. Huh? Understand? So yeah. Yeah. We, we, we would like to know if our energy function is a Lyapunov function with exponent, let's say, less than one half. And Tin K and, and Goin Li, they have very good results, yeah? theoretical results, calculated the exponent, but we, we don't know how to apply their result to our setting. Yeah? To, I mean, our guess is that we are here in this setting. This is our guess. Yeah? And this is what we, what we see in the experiments. Linear convergence, but we, we don't know how to prove it. So did the the did the uh, dual cone co-positivity come up at all? I didn't hear the name. No, 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 no not at all. But you're right. Yeah, the dual. I mean, the dual cone would be the co-positive cone. Yes, but we don't use this here. I mean, this. Okay, this could be of some interest, Henry, when looking at some, let's say, primal dual method related to this problem. And I mean, if one would introduce, let's say, as uh, some composition linear operators, yes, these kind of objects, yeah, then would, one would need yeah, to, to make use of this primal dual thinking, and then uh, this, this cone would play a role. But yeah, we are, we are not so far yet, let's say. <laughs> okay, I mean, but again, let me, let me come back to what I said in my talk. So this, this I find, we found very interesting. So looking at the choices we, we had for our alpha K, 
So K equal, kappa equal one gives Nestor. Okay? And this is something we use in our experiments. And in the last experiment, this was the best. But for kappa equal one, we don't have a convergence result. It's not, it, this case is not covered by our analysis. Okay? And, and th this is completely, yeah, strange in the way. So in particular in, in, the, in the last experiment, number four, yeah, this, this method, the nester of standard method applied yeah, with, with row one yeah, is, is, uh, is the best, yeah? is the best. And the other method I'm, I'm not able to, to provide authorization. Yeah? I mean, the, the, he, this is the fastest one, but for this method, we don't have a, a theory, let's say. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, sorry, no. in the um, sorry in the slide number five, uh, you gave factorizations. Okay. But, I mean, this was the example of Dickinson, I guess. Is this correct? I mean, but let me see. Okay. Yeah, the last one is. Uh, I see, is, is that the uh, factorization correct? Because it should be with non-negative entries, right? Okay, but, but this is this is just the just factorization, the last one, indeed, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. just. Yeah. But okay, yes, I mean, this is not, not this is not uh, not the non-negative one, indeed, yes. Thank you. Are I mean, all the algorithms based on the reformulation with the orthogonal cube? You mean the, the first three algorithms I discussed, they are all yeah. based on, on, on that formulation, yes. And they all they all use this this projection or project on, on, on this on this set. Yeah. They they need less iterations, but a lot of time yeah, because of the SVD yeah, they, 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 they need. I mean I find this idea beautiful, yeah, this this factorization this reformulation. Yeah. But it takes a lot of time. It solves a procrustes problem. Yes. And then, of course, I mean, even the, the first step, yeah, like calculating the matrix B, can also take some time. Yeah? I mean, of course, this is not so bad. Since there are fast algorithms to, uh, for decomposing A in this form. So B is arbitrary. But uh, yeah, this is something which we. We don't count, let's say, in the, in the total time. Yeah. We assume that we have this, we have this, this matrix P. Okay, well, thank you, Radu, again. Okay, thank, thank you. Talk and, uh, and thank you. If people are around at the end, maybe there'll be more questions, not sure. But okay. uh, Walla, please. So, Russell, maybe you want to get your slides up?